So the last part we have is what's called like terms. So to combine like terms, they have to have the same exact variables with the same exact exponents. So the variable parts have to look identical. I like to think of it as like a label being attached. So I'll often call them things, or I might think of a, a noun that starts with that letter like apples. So I have eight thirds of an apple and I'm gonna take away two thirds of an apple. What am I gonna have left? Some amount of apple, but it doesn't become squared apples. It doesn't become square root apples. It is just apples. When I add and subtract, the things I'm talking about don't magically morph into something else. The kind of behind the scenes, what's actually happening, both of these terms have an A. So what we do is we factor the A out. I'm gonna write it a little funny. And hopefully write it a little nicer if I zoom in. So we can factor, pull out the common things and write them on the right or the left because our multiplication is the same either way. So now my number parts are in the parentheses and my common letter is outside. So these can be combined because it was the same letter that I factored out. So 8 thirds minus 2 thirds is 6 thirds, which is actually just 2. So all that work for two apples. But that's the behind the scenes what's going on and what gets skipped over a lot of the times. All right, four fifths of M minus three tenths of M. They both have an M. So we just have to deal with four fifths and three tenths. Luckily I can easily turn fifths into tenths by doubling. So this is eight tenths minus three tenths with that common M. So that is five tenths, which is one half. So we can write that as one half smushed next to M or M over two would also be acceptable. I would personally though, Go with that because the coefficient is separate from the variable then, which is usually how we're going to want to think about it. Half of m, not m divided by 2. Although they are both the same, but seeing the number as a separate thing rather than an over 2, people make fewer mistakes. Then we have this. Well, they're all x's at least. So just common denominator, which actually happens to be 28. So the first fraction is going to get quadrupled. The middle fraction here is going to get doubled. And the last one will stay the same. So I'm going to go ahead and copy down the x. So that is 24 28 minus 10 28 plus 3. 28 So addition and subtraction, do them in the order they appear. So we are going to subtract before we add. So 24 28 minus 10 28 And if that thought like really bothers you, this is why for the longest time when I was first getting used to this, I always changed subtraction to adding the opposite. So now it is plus negative 10 28 Now it's all addition. I can do it in whatever order I want because the negative is now stuck on the 10, not a subtraction floating in between. Either way works. I just, for some people, this kind of like, ah, it's a little easier to think about now. So 24 things plus negative 10 things is 14 things. And then 14 things plus three more things is 17 things. Things being 28 with the X. All right. Now 16, they try to throw you for a loop. You're not going to be thrown though. You pay attention. I see X's. That's a, 
underliney squiggle, not a three. And I see Y's. Still looks like a three. X's and Y's are different things, apples and oranges. We don't add them together and suddenly get whatever an apple orange would be. Ugh. So I'm going to group my X terms together and my Y terms together. So this is where thinking about subtraction as adding the opposite is helpful. Because if I choose to move the three-fifths of Y, I'm going to move it as negative three-fifths of Y. And now I can move that wherever I want because now everything is addition. This minus up front is really negative two-fifteenths. But this is one of the reasons why my negatives always went up because I was always doing this plus add the opposite or plus plus. All right, so X is first. That is going to be negative two-fifteenths plus one-third. There's my X's plus. And that's the other nice thing about changing the subtraction to adding the opposite. Now everything's plus. I don't have to wonder what goes here. It's a plus. And then we have eight holes plus negative three-fifths. And those are our Y's. So now we just have to crunch the numbers inside and there you go. So I can turn thirds into fifteenths by quintupling it. <laughs> All right, so that's negative two fifteenths plus five fifteenths with the x outside. And then this parenthesis, I need fifths. So eight is the same as 40 fifths plus negative three-fifths, still with the y. So over here we have three-fifteenths, which will actually reduce. But over here, 40 minus three is 37. Thirty-seven's prime, so that's, or at the very least, it's not divisible by five, but it is also prime. So the last step we are responsible for is just reducing to lowest terms, so we would write one fifth of X plus 37 fifths of Y. They do both happen to be fifths. Technically we could like write it all over a five, but it looks weird. And generally we want our X's and Y's separable. We don't like to have them all stuck in a big fraction. So that is all you can do. I cannot combine X's and Y's because I don't know what X is or Y is. You know, X could be zero and Y could be a million or X could be five and Y could be negative two. No way to know how they're gonna add because I don't know positive, negative, small, big, whatever they are. So that is our down and dirty, all the crazy craziness you can get with order of operations from our crazy worksheet. I'm sorry.